Thank you once again for joining me in our study in 2 Corinthians. Today we are going to start in chapter 4, verse 16, and we're going over to chapter 5, and we're going to end at verse 5. My name is Seward Gould, and it's such a blessing to bring this message to you. Here we're going to see how God wants us to focus not on the things that are of this world, not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are unseen. Because the things of this world that are seen are only temporary. The things of this world are going to be washed away and we are going to have a new thing. And we have been given a spirit, the Holy Spirit, as a deposit to guarantee what is to come. And what is to come? That's the life that we have, the life that's coming in eternity. That's the life that is going to be separate from this body. And it's going to be such an awesome opportunity for each and everyone. So come with me today. I'm really excited about this lesson. I believe it will be a real blessing to you. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study in 2 Corinthians, as I mentioned already, we're in chapter 4, and we're starting in verse 16. We talked last time about faith and about how that faith appropriates the things that we need that have been deposited in us by grace so that we can come to a point of thanksgiving and bringing glory to God. So we're going to just continue here in verse 16. Therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. What a powerful statement for us here. Paul is saying, do not lose heart, although outwardly we are wasting away. What's he saying? We're getting old. <laughs> We've all been there, right? Each one of us, wherever we are, we understand that we're in a process of getting older and that that process changes us. I mean, if you're a very young person, you probably haven't realized that yet. But if you're starting into your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, you realize that there comes a point in time where your body stops growing in strength and coordination and all these things and comes to a point where it starts to deteriorate. And it seems like you can get an injury a lot quicker and it takes a lot longer to get rid of it and to have the healing and these sort of things, right? Paul is saying here, don't get discouraged. Although outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Don't be concerned with this earth tent that we have here. Don't be concerned with this body that is going to end up in decay. It is coming to a point where it's going to fail. It's not going to be abuse anymore, but we are going to continue on. Therefore, do not lose heart, he's saying. Do not get discouraged. Be encouraged because we are moving, right? For our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs them all. For our light and momentary troubles. It's hard for us to really put this into a scope of understanding because for us, all we know is the time that we've had on this earth. So it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're 10 years old, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever age you are, all we know is the life that we've had on this earth. But Paul is telling us, even though our life can be difficult, even though we go through difficult situations, and Paul was one who went through so many hardships, and he was just about died so many times. He was stoned and left for dead, and he was whipped and beaten and left in jail, and so many things happened to him. And yet, he says, these are just momentary troubles. These are momentary troubles. We need to come to an understanding of the whole scope of eternity. We need to come to an understanding of the reality of our life. Because when we become Christians, when we experience this new creation, eternal life is deposited in us. We are an eternal being from that point forward. So that means that we are going to live forever. Now, does that mean this body's going to live forever? No, it's obvious because from the time that I accepted Jesus, my body strengthened and is now in a process of, of deteriorating and, and getting weaker and weaker. And that's the process that we go through. 
But the time that we are on this earth is so small. And that's what he says here. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that are far outweighs them all. The momentary troubles we have. What's he talking about? Is he talking about, well, they had a little bit of trouble for a couple of minutes in, uh, today or, uh, you know, like last month we had a couple of days that we had trouble? No, he's talking about this life, right? He's saying that the momentary troubles that we have in this life are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs these momentary troubles. Now, if we think about it, our life in the light of eternity is but just a, a flicker in the light, right? It's just, it's just a small thing. If you could take a string and, and run it for thousands and thousands of miles, you would need a microscope on that string to see the length of your life. And that's hard for us to fathom because we have been born into a finite world. We've been born into a start and a finish. We don't understand eternity. It's difficult for us to understand that God was never created. He always was. How does that, then how did he start? Like, how does, how does that work, right? I mean, it's hard for our human minds to understand. And for us to think about that from here on, we are going to last forever and ever and ever. Like a million years from now, it'll just seem like we've barely begun because we have we we have just barely begun because uh, what's a million years to to eternity it is just a drop on that string right paul is saying to us that our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us the eternal glory that far outweighs them all don't let your eyes get focused on the trouble you're going through don't look at the difficulties we are in because we need to look at things in the light of eternity. We need to look at things on the big picture. Yes, we go through difficulties here. Yes, we have desires of the flesh. Flesh is a stumbling stone to us, and it brings a lot of difficulties for our life. But we need to look beyond that. We need to see where we're going. And he says, that's what these things do. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them. There's an eternal glory, there's an eternal light that is going to be so much greater than the troubles that we go through. But the troubles that we go through bring us to the point where we can enjoy these things, that we are going to have these things. He says, don't, don't let your heart get troubled. He says in verse 18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. In verse 7, in the next chapter, he says, we do not walk by sight, but we walk by faith. It is by faith. And this is what we started out talking about last time. That faith is, is in us, that we need that faith to access all the things of God. Paul is encouraging us here not to be troubled by the things that we go through, not to be troubled with the things of this life, because these things are bringing us eternal life. So... We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. What is unseen? The Father, Jesus, the kingdom of God. These are things that are unseen with our eyes, but we know that they are there because we walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. Well, if I can't see it, it isn't there. Well, can you see the wind? Have you ever seen the wind? No, you've never seen the wind, but you know the wind is there. You can feel the wind on your skin. You can see the trees moving. You can see the damage that it can do when it's a fierce wind. We don't have any trouble believing wind even though we don't see it because we see the evidence. And this is how we have to be with God too. We see the evidence that he is. We see the creation that we live in. We see what he's done in our life. And even though we go through difficulties, it is through those difficulties we see God moving. It is through those difficulties we see him protecting and lifting us up. It's through those difficulties that we build our faith and our trust in him. And so we come to this point where all our troubles are outweighed by the goodness and the grace of God. And so we do not fix our eyes on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal. What we see is a temporary problem, right? 
I mean, how long is the, te- is the problem going to be? Even if we had a very difficult life like Paul did, for, and we, were, we lived to 60, 70 years old, I mean, even if we had 70 years of difficulties and going through horrific things here on this earth, compared to the glory we're going to see, compared to what's going to happen to us in heaven, it is nothing. It is nothing, right? That's what he's saying to us. Fix your eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. What is unseen? Jesus is unseen. The Holy Spirit is unseen. God is unseen. The kingdom of heaven is unseen. The grace and glory that God has given us is unseen. The eternal life that we have is unseen. The new creation that is in us is unseen. These are the things we want to focus on, not the troubles of this world. Because I can tell you, If you're going to focus on the troubles of this world, the devil's going to just keep pouring them into your life because that's what he does. He wants to get our focus off the things of God and onto the things that are our troubles. We get so focused. It's so easy when you're sitting down with somebody to talk about all the troubles that are going on and all the difficulties or whatever. And that's the devil getting us focused on the negative rather than focusing on what is unseen what God is doing, what he is moving and how he's moving in our life and in the lives of others. And so this is a great blessing for us when we say this. So let us fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Because what is seen is temporary. It's just a temporary, it's going to pass. It's going to go away. No matter what difficulty you've gone through, no matter how big the difficulty was, it came to an end. It came to an end, right? And even for Paul, the life that he led, the difficulties he went through, and even though he went through a horrific death, it all came to an end. At that point when his head was cut off, it was the end of his difficulties on this earth. He was finished with those things. He was finished with the scene, and he went to the unseen. And the scene no more had any effect on his life. It's the same thing for us. He says, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs them all. All Far outweighs all what? The troubles, the difficulties that we we are having. It far outweighs them. So we need to keep our focus on that. Fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Okay, we're going to jump over into chapter 5, verse 1. Now we know if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. What's he talking about here? What tent are we talking about? What's he saying? He's talking about our body, right? We know that if we have an earthly tent, that's this one, that we live in is destroyed, if this body is destroyed, we have a building from God. We have a new tent. We have another vehicle in which to move in, right? And the eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And that's what we look forward to. When we understand that, when we understand that this is a temporary body, but we're going to have a permanent body that is going to be much greater, when we understand that this body is going to fail us, when we understand this tent is going to be destroyed, then we know. I mean, we have the story of the children of Israel in Mount Sinai, God gave Moses the instructions to build the tabernacle. And the tabernacle just means a tent, right? It's a tabernacle that was built by tent. It was the dwelling place of God that they used to pack up and carry with them. And every time they stopped, they would set it all up again. They worshiped God there and they did their sacrifices or whatever there. But there came a time when Solomon built a permanent dwelling for God. Not one in tents that moved, but there was one that became, that was permanent. This is kind of a foreshadowing of our life, right? We are in a temporary tent right now, but there's coming a time when there's going to be a building. We are in a temporary thing that can move around in this earth, but there's going to be a time when this thing wears out, when it's not going to be of value anymore, and when we are going to step into another building built from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And that's going to be a wonderful day, right? Do we understand it all? No. That's where faith comes in. We believe it by faith, right? We believe what we cannot see. But the word is telling us here. Paul is telling us. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed in our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. We're looking forward to this thing. 
And this is why Paul tells us to keep our eyes focused on what is unseen, not on the seen. Not to be focused on this tent. There's one that's coming. There's one that is greater. I mean, when Moses finished building the tent, it took them nine months to build the tabernacle. They built that tabernacle. It was a wonderful thing. But compared to what Solomon built, it was nothing, right? Compared to what Solomon built, because he built this great big uh, building and this wonderful place for the Lord and for them to worship and sacrifice and do the different things they did. And that become the per permanent dwelling, right? Now we know, of course, anything built by man is not a permanent dwelling. We could get into it, but we're not going to. There was actually a, a third temple that was created that was much more permanent, which is us, his children, right? But this is just an example for us to see. And this is what Paul is telling us here. For while we're in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swept up by life. Now it is God who made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. This is the whole point that Paul is making here, that we don't focus on this life. We're not focusing on this body. We're not focusing on the things that can be seen with our eyes, but that we're focusing on what is coming up. Our mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now God has made us for this very purpose, has given us the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have this new creation in us. That the Holy Spirit is dwelling with us. That this new creation is the new temple of God where he dwells here on earth. And we have this as a guarantee for what's coming. This is just a, a small part of what going to be after we leave this earth. When we can focus on that, rather than the troubles and the situations we're going through here, when we can focus our eyes on what is unseen, rather than the troubles and the difficulties we see here, then that changes what is going to happen for us. That changes our outlook in life. It changes how we walk because then we can walk by faith that we can look and see what is, is there for us. And this guarantee that we have by the Holy Spirit is a promise given to us. It's a promise with a seal. And the seal is the Holy Spirit that is dwelling in us. And the fact that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us as a human being is an amazing thing. Because for 4,000 years, no such thing had ever been heard of. Moses didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in him. Noah didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in him. You know, David didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in him. All these people, all these patriarchs, all the prophets that came through, they didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. They had the Holy Spirit working on them on the outside and leading them, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. In fact, in John 14, when Jesus is speaking to his disciples, he says, you know the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is around you, but soon he's going to be in you. Because Jesus hadn't died on the cross yet, the Holy Spirit was not able to be in them and to make them alive. But when Jesus rose from the grave that first Sunday, and that evening he met with his disciples in a locked room, and he breathed into them the Holy Spirit, the guarantee of all the things that he'd said, the guarantee of all the things he had been preaching about. Oh, we thank you for joining me today. I hope this was a blessing for you. Remember, we have a guarantee what is coming. The guarantee is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your love. We thank you that you are always with us. We thank you for the deposit of the Holy Spirit that you have given us, guaranteeing what is to come. That we need not focus on the things of this world, but to focus on what you have set before us. We need not to focus on the dwellings that we're in and the difficulties that we go through in this world, but that we focus on you and what you are doing. That we focus on what is, what is to come. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us this faith that we're able to do that. Help us, Lord, not to set our eyes on what we can see with our physical eyes, but to set our spiritual eyes on the things of the Spirit that we, are, we know that are there by faith. We just ask you, Lord, to be with those who are struggling in this way, to help them to focus on the things that are set before them. Father, we just pray a comfort and a joy for each one who is struggling today, a comfort and a joy for them that they might understand the goodness and the love that you have for them. 
We thank you for this opportunity to share your word in this medium. Father, we just pray that as it goes out, that your, your words will not return void. Father, we just pray that you will touch the hearts of each one. Father, we pray that they would encourage others to watch the video and that it would be spread out that many people would come to know you and understand the life that you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. It's been such a blessing to share this with you. Remember, God loves us so much. Let us focus on what we cannot see. Amen. Okay, girls, take us home.